a large twin model water tube flue boiler. This is part three. The time has come to remachine the chimney cap. I will be glad to see the end of it looking like this. It is a simple plain turning job and is done in two stages. To start with I'm not doing anything with the chimney barrel. I'm only concentrating on the top cap. I fitted it into the chuck of my Boxford lathe and here I'm starting the reprofiling process of the underside of the cap. I'm using a round nose tool but this is chattering a little bit. For a job like this I really think I need to take finer cuts. After reprofiling the underside of the chimney cap I use some wet or dry sandpaper to clean it up. Next it's time to fit the chimney cap back onto the chimney. The original fit of the chimney cap onto the chimney tube was not bad, but I would like a tighter fit, so I'm using some Loctite 603 to retain the cap onto the tube. I know this is a chimney and it's going to get hot, but it's not going to get that hot. And from my experience of using Loctite 603, when you heat the joint with a blowtorch, it doesn't immediately fall off, it still appears quite tight. I think that Loctite 603 will be fine for this job. I'm actually applying far too much. And a quick caution on this one, when using Loctite 603, before spinning the component, remove the surplus. You do not want to get splashed with this stuff. Let the turning begin. This morning, when I was wading through the comments on the channel, there was a very strange one, nothing new there. This man said, the videos are too short. Even though at the end of every video I say, if they're too short for you, just watch the playlists end to end. But anyway, I digress. He then went on to give me some silly advice and ended up by saying, well, you do go on a bit, I suppose. Needless to say, I deleted that comment. What I'm doing at the moment is reducing the diameter of the chimney top cap, because originally it was far too thick and looked ridiculous. I'm using my Smart and Brown lathe for this job, because it has a four-jaw self-centering chuck which is large and accepts most of the chimney tube, so there isn't too much sticking out. My recommendation though is to take it easy when doing jobs like this, because if you make a mess of it and the lathe tool grabs the work, the power of the lathe and the large chuck will chew up the chimney tube very easily. These clips are running at 100% speed and maybe I'm going on a bit because this is a tutorial and I do like to explain to people how to do the job. Most of these turning clips from now on are running at 400%, four times normal speed. I do not have an engineer's brain, as can be clearly seen from this operation. Instead of very carefully removing a little bit at a time, I remove quite a lot of it in little bits at a time, which leaves steps on the work and this helps me gauge how thick I want the end part to be. I want this chimney cap to look in scale with the chimney, not like something colossal sat on the top. I continue the job nibbling away at the top of the cap. Not only am I reducing the diameter of the chimney top cap, I'm reducing the length of it too. And once again, I do this in steps. And as I've just mentioned, this is just the way I do it. It's neither right or wrong, but it suits me. Now the chimney top cap is getting very close to the final diameter. I fitted a round nose tool, and even though you can't see it, I set the tool to a different angle than you're seeing here to turn the underside of the cap. In this clip, I'm just chamfering the edges. For the final finishing job, I'm not using a round nose tool. I'm back to the tool I use quite a lot. As you can see, I'm shortening the chimney cap a little bit more, and now this is the final diameter and the final shape. When I get to the top part, I pull the tool away from the center. And as I do that, to get a gentle slope on it, I wind both the saddle handle and the top slide handle at the same time. You do have to practice doing this, it is not as easy as it looks. I'm finishing the job with some emery cloth to get rid of the tool marks. You will notice that I've folded the emery cloth into a pad so that I don't get my fingers too close to the work. I need to keep all of my fingers intact because I need to use them for the other part of my job, which is as a keyboard player. I'm finishing the job with a folded piece of wet or dry sandpaper this gives quite a fine finish. 
This, by the way, is 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper, so the finish isn't spectacular. After polishing the cap on my polishing spindle, it did look a whole lot better, but I do not want it this shiny. So I used a piece of old, worn Scotch Brite to just take the shine off it a little bit. It is, of course, all down to personal preferences. I do not like to see chimney caps too highly polished. This will be okay for the moment. There's a bit more general polishing to do. First of all, I'm going to show you this method. It's called Brasso Wadding. And as it clearly says on the tin, it is a metal polish wadding for brass, copper, stainless steel or chrome. This is a very labour intensive job in a small way and it takes a while to complete. You rub the wadding quite hard on the part, then you wipe it off with a cloth. This Brasso wadding is really great stuff to use for a variety of applications, however there is another way which is a bit simpler, provided the part is smooth and you can spin it. This is T-Cut, it's an abrasive paint restorer and it's really good for cleaning brass and copper. I refitted the chimney into the chuck of my Smart and Brown lathe and here, with quite a lot on a cloth, I'm wiping it around the cap. It was also helping to clean up the copper too. And now the chimney top cap looks like this and I'm sure you will agree it is an improvement on the original one. I'll quickly put that on screen. Once upon a time, the chimney cap looked like this, but now thankfully it doesn't. This clip shows the bottom part of the chimney, the mounting into which the chimney tube fits, and this gives you an idea of scale. When I move the camera up the chimney tube, you can first of all see the tube, followed by the top cap, which is a little bit more delicate than the base, but that's okay, it's meant to be. A bit of an improvement, I think. This is a very well made good looking boiler from a company called Pendle Steam Boilers. Their web address is on screen at the moment and they make a comprehensive range of good quality steam boilers and a few condensers that look remarkably similar to the ones I used to make. That's the end of this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.